Welcome everyone to this week's IPLD meeting. It's already 2020. It's uh, generally the 13th, 2020. Um, and as every week, we go through the stuff that we've worked on and we'll work on next week, next week and then go over any open issues or agenda items we might have. Um, um, I can start with myself because I don't have anything done yet because I was on vacations. So yes. next one on the, and for next week, it's just catching up, I guess. Um, and so next on the list is Michael. Hey, uh, yeah, so um, I'm still working on just IPLDFying all this data out of S3 buckets and getting it into car files. Um, the I wrote an allocator now, so it goes through all of the sort of pre-processed information and figures out like which car files to write it. It's going to write it into um, how to collect that. But I got a kind of last-minute request to to write the metadata for each file using an explicitly one. So I had to backtrack a bit and pause some stuff that I was doing, go back to work on that. Um, I ended up writing a PR to the IPFS importer, um, which wasn't accepted, but uh, kicked off a better way to do this that Alex wrote up um, that's a bit cleaner. And so now there's a PR from Alex that is actually much nicer, which I'll use to, to do all this. Um, that's it from last week. Um, and a lot of it was just coming back online after uh, being out for a while for, for holiday. Um, we're about to also do performance reviews. So that's going to consume a ton of time. So general sort of, I see productivity is going to go down, I think, across the board. For the next couple weeks. And that's it for me. Rob, what's up? You're next. Okay. Um, sorry, just finishing up notes. Okay, so I, uh, I've mostly been taken up with car file. Uh, so I put a car file, parser, and creator in JavaScript that can do deal with them in multiple ways. It's not, I, I've wrapped them in a data store interface so you can Sort of treat it like a place to get and put block, but um, it, it, obviously it's not like an uh, immutable thing where you can just pull things out and put things in unless you're going to deal with the like smaller ones. So it's like it's, it's something where you create it with different modes. Like you say, you want to create one and just stream out all the blocks. You can create it in a in a, in a mode that will do that, or um, you can create one where you can stream in blocks. Uh, and so there's a few different create modes there, but basically the, the code is in place to decode and understand car files um, and, and create them as well in JavaScript, um, turning out to be not as critical as Michael suggested but, you know, for, um, for the uses that we had in mind, but it'll get there. Uh, and it is useful to have it anyway because it's really good. Oh, no, no, I'm still going to use it. Um... Like I'm still, yeah, I'm still going to use Deferred, it. Yeah. No, yeah. no, I mean, I mean, I'll probably use it like this week. <laughs> okay. okay. So, um, yeah, yeah. And I, so I went back. Uh, I went back and did Zipcar as well, and gave it some streaming modes. I can't remember if I talked about that at a previous meeting, but um, Zipcar now can deal with larger files streaming in and out. Um, so it's just another format, but it's actually been quite a, a, a good exercise to play with these data store interfaces because it's. It's making me have stronger opinions about block storage um, methods that for IPLD and uh, and how you know, perhaps we want to come up with entirely new uh, interfaces for IPLD specific data uh, and evolve past the existing data store and block store interfaces that are being used um, just because they're a little bit clunky for what we want and you end up having to wrap these things in all these convenience methods to to get at what you want, so that's that. Uh, just talking a bit, a bit about that with Michael about ideal IPLD block storage um, uh, util sorry utilities and, and interfaces. Um, so maybe that's something we'll toy toy with in the coming year. Um, pull request number two thirty to the specs repo has a car spec. Uh, I took Marsh's spec in I think it's called cool, regret to twenty eight or. Um, she started one and I have finished that off. Um, now it's so I, I did it in the 
uh, I, I spec'd it in the way that I thought would be uh, most useful. And so just according to my conception about what they say it's good for and how we thought we were going to be using them. Um, and that's, that's generated discussion about, is that too flexible? And so uh, it's been good to get at some of the um, original design decisions or reasoning behind car files, how strict they want to be. Um, you know, there's, there's all the way from um, car files should be a, uh, a strict deterministic format. You give it a, um, you take a route and it sh and you should be able to have an entire DAG laid out in a specific way in a car file. So that if you look in a car file's header and it's got a route, then uh, the the body will always be the same no matter how whether you create it again or not. And whether that's useful or realistic um, is a, you know, a topic for discussion. Um, and then the other end of the spectrum is it's just a bundle of blocks that we want to throw them in and treat as a data source. So that's not resolved, that's on ongoing discussion. Um, may get more resolved as, as Filecoin matures more in some of these discussions about retrieval market and the way car files are used um, happen. So um, for now, it's, it's not resolved, but uh, I, my guess is car files may end up being a, a multi-mode thing where it's, at its base, it's just a bundle of blocks, but it has a mode where it can be more strict and deterministic that is useful for some purposes. Um, so that might, I, I suspect that might be what the spec ends up as, but we'll see how discussion evolves on that one. Um, not super critical to get one, that one closed out, but um, it, it would be good to evolve in this direction. Uh, and there's lastly, um, just of note there, an issue number 233 in the spec repo, um, probably all aware of that one, that was just a, they're coming out of a discussion that Peter started via email about deterministic, oh no, not deterministic, um, the validity of multi-block data structures and and, and how um, we build these data structures and have these indicators of things in other blocks that may or may not be true. So for example, a, a, a collection with a root block that has that tells you the size of the entire collection and whether or not that's true or not. Um, the, the original example for Peter was um, having um, sharded um, files and you span a bunch of blocks to put with the bytes and the, the, you know you have a root data structure that tells you the offset and the length but it's not necessarily the case that the children will have the right length um, you can create malicious data structures or you can have just erroneous ones so just a discussion issue about about that I, th I thought that would be good to turn into a doc in the spec repo, just as a discussion doc, a concept doc, um, so that those, those of us who are building these data structures um, either build in validators or um, in our specs, we write up details about these kinds of concerns. Um, so that's a quite interesting discussion. Uh, and that's probably it for the notable things from me. So, um just really quick on the determinism, based on our last conversation with Hannah, where we figured out how all this stuff actually works, um, I don't think the determinism is actually in any way a requirement of that format spec. Um, the determinism that they currently rely upon is actually the selector determinism. Um, and the way that selectors return blocks in a deterministic manner is already part of graph sync um, because you have to validate it on the other end. So I don't think that we need to continue to like define that in the car file part. Also just the way that these car files are being created for PowerPoint right now are an artifact of like a very crazy like inefficient way that the deals are currently being proposed and created um, which you could easily see them just backing out of at some point in time for something much more performant. We, we can talk later about like what's going on there but um, I don't expect like that current flow to even remain. So um, I don't know of any like additional format la layer concerns about determinism beyond that. Yeah, I, and there's, you know, just things like, does that, like if you want it to be deterministic, does that mean that, like what, what, what are your limits on a DAG? Hey, do you want the entire DAG or is there like ELAP have links to external things? Um, that's, you know, if I want to store arbitrary IPLD in Filecoin, Mm -hmm. What if I want to link to other things that are outside of the file? Um, anyway, that's that's a, I, I, that's a good uh, that, that sparks some good discussion, I think, and it's getting to some mm -hmm. of the roots of these things. Because I, I, I'm finding that that's, 
that seems to be a good way to operate in this environment where it's context held in people's heads and it's not written down or it's difficult to find or it's spread and people are busy. It's to try and formalize something and then see who complains. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, and, and then you, you, you sort of start to find out the, uh, the roots of some mm. of the, uh, the thinking and the original intentions. So, um, yeah. yeah. Oh, the other thing I, I, um, I, I did want to mention as well that, that I've been working on is in, 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 other, in, uh, in some of my other time, basically, and, you know, I haven't been studying full time on car files, so that's because I'm going to and study that. Um, I've been <laughs> working on, a, uh, on JavaScript seaboard parsing, just seeing if, um, if I can do some um, more performance parsing and generation of seaboards. So that's, that's sort of mopping up additional time of mine um, as I go along and do these other things. That's good. Some other stuff that I was doing, I, I'm now just blocked on by the fact that Seaboard generation, like the actual serialization stuff is just too slow. Um, it's like a relatively modest amount of like large data. It's just going to take me like months to serialize essentially. So I'm giving up uh, <laughs> on that until something changes. So. Who's up next? Me. <laughs> um, so speaking of performance, yeah. So I'm also just getting back from the holidays and kind of getting my brain back in the mode. Um, but I'm picking up on all of that work that I put down on the node builder interface stuff, which to recap is a bunch of work that started off because as I tried to do more stuff and do it faster, I realized that there were going to be some serious performance ceilings on the way that the first draft of the node builder interface worked. Basically the fact you had to build up small things and then build up bigger things was the most convenient interface the first time I wrote it. Um, but then when you start trying to benchmark things and try to improve the performance, you quickly realize that actually that's like the opposite of the memory model that I want. If I want to go fast, I want to do like big allocations and then fill in all the values because by amortizing the allocations, I go fast. So that rethink has been taking a while. Um, and y'all remember how selectors went where like by the time it was done, I declared I'd basically done 41 drafts and I'm pretty sure the 41th was it kind of been doing that here too. I think this one might be it. Um, I've started another draft this week that is bringing together all of the falls experiments and the key themes of it are, um, it is very much about accumulating mutations. Um, this interface changes significantly in that it does not attempt to return intermediate progress. I did have some draft attempts which tried to do that. So you could like build part of a thing and then it would return a node in the middle and it would be immutable and you could carry that node around somewhere else. It would just be like weird, but the interface tried to let you. Um, I've scrapped that design. It was possible, but it was too freaking complex by half. Um, and it also ended up having runtime costs to keep track of what was frozen and what wasn't. And like, this is something that you could do in, <clears throat> I hate to say it, but a better compiler such as Rust. Um, but doing it in Go is without runtime overhead is just, no. So that got scrapped. And um, at the same time, I did some experiments on trying to change the error handling to like be able to accumulate errors and let you check them periodically when you wanted to and if this was going to lead somewhere more ergonomic and that also was like no actually um, the new design is returning errors promptly at all points while accumulating the successful progress and not returning that um, this turns out to hit the happiest paths of me doing the minimum of freezing work, which means the fastest runtime there and returning errors promptly at all points means the most direct control flow and actually saves a bunch of intermediate memory in the builders. So this design seems to be working out better than all the previous drafts combined. Thank goodness. Um, I'm also probably keeping the node style idea discussed in our last meeting because that still looks like it's going to clarify a bunch of things. Um, in particular, let me get rid of the amend methods, which were high maintenance and annoying, um, but still give me a way to bring those back later. Um, so I'm pretty sure that one's going to stay in, but I haven't written a lot more code around that because it turned out not to be on the hot path for what I did this week. 
which was, in addition to wrangle all those interfaces, write some dang code to make sure that they actually can be implemented. So I started working on maps with this updated node builder interface, um, both to get something that I can benchmark and make sure I'm you know, not in la-la land here, and um, also specifically to make sure that complex keys remain possible because those have been kind of tricky. Um, by complex keys, I mean if you had a type system from the schemas and you had struct types and they have string representations and you want to use them as your map keys because that's the thing we want to be able to do. It should be defined, right? You've got strings in the serial form, so you're happy, but you want to view them as structs when you're writing code. Should be able to do this. Um, but it shows up as a complexity in the node builder interface because when you are building typed maps, that means your keys have to support recursing into building a struct for a key. So you can't just have put string value, it doesn't work. So the new interface is basically you can uh, ask for, um, previously the node builders grew this feature where you had to be able to ask for a node builder for the sub key type. Um, this is still kind of the way it is, but it's now a bit more streamlined. You don't ask for the typed builder. You just ask for the thing that's going to let you modify the memory and it follows the rules correctly without bothering you about it so much. It's just basically the same thing, but in one linear flow instead of like a branch that you have to bring back around again and twist and knit. Um, TLDR things work now. I'll, I'll just try to wrap that train of thought up. And I got to benchmarking things and it doesn't suck. And I mean that to like Eric standards doesn't suck. So the new maps that have all of these constraints, <clears throat> um, the new maps that have all of these extra constraints around our interfaces and they support all of these immutability things and they have the whole node builder pattern and it has all this infrastructure in place that we can do verifications and types and complex keys. And by the way, they maintain order. Um, they are slower than Golang native maps because they are more featureful. But they're not much slower. They are less than twice as slow. So this is actually pretty good. And this is on like really small workloads. I think they actually might get better on bigger ones. And I'm going to try to bring more benchmarks next week to back this up. But the, the good news is the absolute factor of time is not much worse. And the amortization or the um, allocation count is amortized. Um, and this was really, really, really hard to do. Normally, if you try to do much with interfaces, you will start running into runtime conv T2E or some function like this. And if you program Go long enough and you do performance, you learn that set of words and you start to hate it. And this uh, system of maps is going to manage to let you do iteration over the whole map. It uses tons of interfaces for the nodes. And it's not going to incur any of those conversion allocations because the whole thing does slab allocations inside the map structure and then returns pointers to the insides of these. And so the whole thing can get away without boxing allocations. So you can have a map without having an allocation per key and per value. This is kind of cool. More benchmarks on that next week, I hope. But it's going well. Finn. All right. That sounds really Thank good. Um, I, I, the, I, I, are you to still toying with changing the name node style? I still hate it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. I don't care, man. <laughs> I'm going, to, I'm going to link to the discussion um, just for reference in, in the notes. It sounds I had another like draft like a, where I called it prototype and that had more characters and I was like, eh. It sounds like an 80s b-boy reference or something. Like I can see it painted in like graffiti letters, like no style. <laughs> okay. <All> right. <clears throat> Um, I, I'm also not really in favor of uh, no style, just for 
uh, yeah. Perfect. Information. Um, I, but, I yeah, but I, other than that, it sounds really good, Eric. Well done. <laughs> I I forgot to add uh, some news because uh, it happened during the holiday time. Is that the major Seabor library in Rust has now tag support? Oh, they took it. I thought they were done. refusing to indefinitely. And it's basically, so it's done by uh, Rüdiger, who is also part of the wider IPFS, IPLD community. So he's the, he organizes the IPFS meetings in Munich. So he did the whole work and basically, so there was a PR going on for a month, two months, I don't know. Like he really like pushed it forward. So now we have tech support, it is released. Um, so that's great. Um, yeah. How awkward is it? Does it, is it? Does it feel natural using um, tags with 30 or no? You, like you have to jump through some hoops on the side. So it's basically it's it's be it's um so in Rust you have um, feature tags, which means that you if you define a dependency, you also can define features you want to use. So it's kind of like behind a flag, kind of, and it's behind this because um yeah, it kind of screws up the parsing and it's like it's not a not like basically it's the it's a Best solution you could do, but it's um, But yeah. Um, but at least I'm not certain that we will use that one, at least for a start. Um, and yeah, that's cool. Um, one point uh, uh, I want to mention is that uh, Rod, you mentioned that you were talking with Michael about data store interfaces kind of things. Uh, I'm totally interested in that one because um, I think on my list for the next few days, weeks is kind of really getting um, Rust IPLD done. And that's really an important part of it. Like, I mean, it would be nice to get the storage part right from the beginning. Um, and yeah, so what the interface could be like, um, I guess it might be pretty similar to what Go or JavaScript is doing. So please keep me in the loop. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, I, think there's a pri I think there's a private discussion uh, thread that I started that I'll try and dig up and, and share. It just started the discussion about what ideal interface might look like. Yeah, cool. Thanks. Um, is there anything else uh, someone wants to discuss before we go into the after party and discuss secret things we can't share publicly, if there are any? <laughs> Depends. <laughs> it's different every week. All right, then um, I say goodbye for to everyone who watch who's watching the video, and we see us again next week. Goodbye, everyone. Bye. <laughs>